Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through the year that was 2020 from the viewpoint of the index trend model, the regime filter I use for my own investing. So first thing first, what is a regime filter? It basically tells me how bullish or bearish the market is and I use it to allocate my risk to the market. If the market's 100% bullish, I'm 100% long. If the market's 50% bullish, well, I'm 50% long. And uh, it allows me to allocate risk to the market. The good thing about having a trend model is the trend model is always right. It, you know, it's up the price of the markets. You know, it cannot be wrong. So, that being said, when the index model moves, I have to move with it. So I'm just going to run through what happened in 2020. I've got the log scale on. If you're, if you're looking at price action and comparing with previous years, always use a log scale. We've got the 250 here. Obviously, the 250 is the realistic market for anyone who trades growth stocks. The 250 and the small cats, they're quite similar. Um, the FTSE 100, yeah, it, it's nothing like the stocks we trade. So what I have done, I mean, I mean let's, let's just get straight to it. The market crashed. It came down to a very interesting level. You know, we looked at a few levels on a few markets. We put a few levels in play. But the thing I want to stress is it's, I kind of, I remember it from, uh, you know, going back to previous crashes where you think you've missed it. You know, you see stocks bouncing huge percents off the lows and you think you've missed the market. So, you know, I've done a lot of back testing on this over the years. And this is, you know, in 2011, 12, I put this into my methodology. This is what I use. You know, it's here to be shared with everyone. There's, there's no magic. Um, this was that interesting area in the market it came down to. But what I want to stress is the time it takes for the market to sort itself out before I started taking trades again. So first things first, on the public pages of the website, you can go into the tools index trend model page and you will find this is the trend model from 2020 ticking down. There's also you can you can go and back test the, the trend model from 2015 if you want. This one's sort of you know runs through the market going into that little bare leg in 2015. So I'll just run you through this and you'll see it in real action tick down extremely fast. The dates are here on the bottom and the, the available heat for my methodology. And that's why it pulled me out of the market so fast. move on from that and then I will just move on to this this is from the market lows third of the fourth 20 and I'm just going to step forward on the index trend model and ninth of the fourth 20 2.8 percent 17th of the fourth 20 24th of the fourth 8th of the 5th, 15th of the 5th, 22nd of the 5th. Now, I had no trend trades running all the way through here. 29th of the 5th, 6th, sorry, 5th of the 6th, we tick orange. This is the first time we get into that, you know, recovery area, that sort of, 40 to 60% sort of area on the trend model where things are actually, you know, trying to tick up, you know, price action is, is doing okay. 
uh, the trend is still down. You know, the trend, is, the primary trend is still down. You can see which, which markets, you know, which markets were trying to trying to pull us out of the hole. Small caps were struggling still. 19th of the 6th. 26th of the 6th. 3rd of the 7th. You know, back into the... Uh, it just dipped, it dipped back in and then it moved back up into the orange. 24th of the 7th. 31st of the 7th. 7th of the 8th. The index trend model went bullish. So, you know, let's just put that in, into perspective. This is when the index trend model dropped into the red. We'll put, you know, it fell, an, the market fell another 37% after that. Stocks fell further, as they always do. The index trend model went orange on this day and then it just pulled back in again and then it went orange again and then it went green here. Now, where I do business in small cap growth stocks, the best and the strongest growth stocks started emerging here. Small, small cap started to emerge from base. Let me just jump off this and I'll just jump straight onto I think um, probably Ergo was one of the early ones for me. Let's just get this date here on Ergo. 1st of the 7th, 20. So I took this trade probably on the 2nd of the 7th, 20. Goes back to find it. I took, I took Ergo on this 2nd orange dot here where it moved up into the orange again and that was one of the first ones to break out of a base there was a few from pullbacks before that there was off the lows there was CER there was a few stocks what were in pullbacks right off the lows they gave you know signals later on but what we need to stress here looking at what's happened here and, and talking to members you know the psychological problems you know the market's fallen into a, a crash uh, a lot of people had some pretty uh, strong opinions down there that the market couldn't go up again the market and, and stocks did these a lot of stocks did dead cat bounces but what I want to stress is the ones what were doing the dead cat, cat bounces not my game you know I'll leave that to those people who, who trade that kind of way me, I'm a, I'm a trend trader of the best growth stocks emerging from the best bases. At the time, the market allows me to have some risk. From here is where the market started saying, yes, you know, you can start putting a little bit of risk back on the table for that style. Swing trades in this area, yes, okay, but committing to longer term positions, you know, I, I'm months to years for trend trades. The market started letting me sort of allocate to that methodology here I'll you know straight away just go back to, to what was happening at the end of May and the beginning of June everyone told you to lighten up you know you've got your chance to get out of stocks you know it's this this bounces your chance to to free you know get out of those uh, bad positions what you've just been whacked on you know all that all that sort of rear view mirror um, you know talk it all went down here and everyone it was all doom and gloom you've got a chance to sell your stocks now in my world the market you know i trade price and 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 the price of the markets the, the markets are forward looking they are the leading indicator and they literally only just started to let me allocate risk here they dipped red again we was talking about a uh, a higher low and it never came it, it went sideways and based out which is perfect if the markets are consolidating the move going sideways you know stocks good stocks can be outperforming the market quite easily and ergo broke out on this day here the the index trend model went green on this day here 
and the account huge gains moving forward uh, I've still got over 75 percent plus open gains on the account you know I've closed some winners rotated some trades it, it's you know from this point here in the markets to where we are has been a huge year fantastic year but this is a lesson in psychology and how you can use a trend model you know as a trend follower in sort of style i'm always going to be i'm, I'm not going to be involved down here with that style that style takes time to sort of set up again there might be the occasional one that really looks nice but you know in a market like that not many stocks didn't get bashed um if you look where the swings went in the US, Zoom and the swings like that, they were right off the lows, you know. The first pullbacks from from, from Zoom out, out of the bases, they were right in this area here. So, I mean, what, what can you learn from this? Well, the trend model can save you an awful lot of anxiety, an awful lot of just, you know, this can beat the life out of you and, and you won't know what to do. And, you know, a trend model can sort of, a regime filter can sort that out for you, <laughs> you know. Um, when the trend model goes bullish, popular opinion's probably going to be on the other side of this, you know. You know, it, it's been constantly on the opposite side of this for me, I, it, it was in 2000, you know, after the election and the Brexit vote, uh, the trend model t got us all long at trading bases and popular opinion was the market was going down again. You know, in 2012, it was the same and 13. Popular opinion was the market should go down. The trend model ticked up. And, and you know, so those three fantastic market legs over the last 10 years are what where you can make huge gains. You've really got to kind of rethink the way you allocate risk if you're not taking part in those those uh, great markets. So I think the main point to see here is how late I started taking trades. First trade was here. I took a lot of trades in this, well, in this period. Another thing to just uh, have a look at here is the market has not made a new 52 week high yet. The trend model is fully bullish. It, it 52 week highs aren't, aren't a, um, a criteria on my trend model, but you know, the market has not broken out here yet. Yes, anywhere in the right hand side will be normal action. Uh, we can go to the, the S&P, the US markets have broken out. Europe has basically, here's the rest of the world excluding the US and The rest of the world has just broken out for the first time in about three years. It's been going sideways for about three years. Let, let's just, you know, one, two, three, definitely three years. Sideways, four years, three, three, four years. We've just broken out in Europe. Well, the rest of the world has just broken out. But I suppose, you know, excluding the US. You know, does that mean the top's in? Well, the way you've got to look at stuff like, stuff like this is the market will correct, move higher, correct, move higher, correct, move higher. What are you trying to sort of capture? The upswings in the bull market or the whole bull market? You know, different methods, different time frames. But I think it's just important just to not be... It's kind of insanity to be bearish at all time highs. Yes, at some point the market will put a top in. But, you know, just jump into jump into history and just have a look what happens when, you know, when markets break out. When they broke out back in 2013, this, this one kind of went sideways for quite some time. You have a look at the moves on, on markets and stocks in that period still because it was a pretty good market as well still so a little bit overkill but you know if you're interested in maneuvering the market 
using a regime filter well well there's something to think about you know you could uh, quite easily create something around there 